How's it going everybody and welcome to the channel. So the new thing is this long distance cruising with some 18650 lithium ion battery packs. So naturally I wanted to try it out, but the already made battery packs were difficult to find and yes, very pricey. So I watched a few videos and decided to try and make this myself. I've also watched a few videos on battery tests and how to identify fake 18650 batteries. So after all, it seems that Sony, Panasonic, Samsung, and LG brands of batteries are the good ones. And apparently there are fake ones out there and other brands that just don't measure up to their advertised potential. So I decided to go with a reputable dealer and that dealer was Race Day Quads. So I got these batteries from Race Day Quads. They are the LG HG2 3000 milliamp 18650 lithium ion batteries that come in a pack of two inside a plastic container. It looks like they are the real deal. I didn't find any abnormalities on the top metal cap or the bottom metal contacts and they all had a charge of 3.52 volts right out of the box. So four were laid out since I'm making a 4S battery and use the disposable fingernail file to scratch out the metal contact surfaces. The layout is positive, negative, positive, negative from the top side. Then the main wires were cut to length for soldering. After soldering the bottoms of the two batteries, the voltage was then checked. 7.06. Here are the batteries, label 1, 2, 3, 4, and now the two halves were hot glued together. I got some balance cables from Amazon. All products that I use in this video will be listed in the description down below with purchase links. And now the balance leads were then cut to length and the two halves hot glued together. Here is how the bottom looks like. Those numbers represent batteries. And now the top with the red wire soldered on. So the first black wire is soldered on to battery number one on the bottom side of the pack. Then the third black wire is soldered on to battery number three on the bottom side of the pack. So now it looks like this. So the second black wire is now soldered onto battery number two on the top side. So now we have the red wire and the fourth black wires left to go on the balance connector. Next, the XT60 is soldered onto battery number one and four on the top side. And the red wire is piggyback soldered to the positive battery wire. And the fourth black wire is piggyback soldered to the negative battery wire. Now the soldering portion is now complete. So I got some fish paper and cut them out to place on the top and on the bottom of the battery pack. So they're just hot glued on there for placement purpose. And here we are going to test out the battery. Now I'm just using my IMAX B6 charger to test out the voltage and the individual cell layout to confirm correct wire placements. So next, I got some shrink wrap in the 85 millimeter size and the green color was the cheapest one I could find on Amazon, link down below. I cut it out to size and used my trusty old Videl Sassoon hair dryer to shrink the wrap. And finally, a charger with Lithium ion mode was used to fully charge the battery pack up to 4.2 volts per cell.
A final touch was added with the RDQ sticker that came with the purchase of the batteries from Race Day Quads. All right, so here we go, guys. We got the Dytone GTM515 here. Got the battery already strapped on here. So gonna go for a little line of sight test first before I do any FPV here. So let's go ahead and power this up and get it ready to fly. All right, so here we go. It feels pretty good. I got the bi blade props, the Gem Fan 5152s. So I got my FPV goggles recording this as well so you guys can see what's going on. But I'm not able to see it. And so far, it seems to be pretty decent. It does have some power to it too. I'm not going to do like full on punch out or anything. Yeah, but it feels really nice. It is as if I'm flying it with about... I guess I'll, I could say like about a 3S battery. Usually I fly this thing with about a 850 milliamp 4S, uh, 3S. Usually gives me about, about 5 minutes. But I could squeeze out a lot more if I just cruise. So I think I can do actually acro <laughs> with this battery pack. It feels that good but you don't want to draw too much amps out of this battery. It is not meant for that. It is meant for slow release. So nice for cruising around. All right, so now I know how it feels like via line of sight. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the FPV goggles and see how it looks like. There we go. All right, so we've been flying for two minutes, looks like, and I've wasted 186 milliamps. So let's go and check it out. Fifteen and a half volts, three point eight five. Wow. It's going down pretty fast. I was expecting it to have a better charge. Yeah, I don't want to go too far. I just have a RXSR receiver on here. And the RSSI doesn't look that promising. <laughs> so I'll stay near and cruise around. So hopefully we can squeeze out a pretty good flight time with this battery pack. I've seen videos of guys with the FlyWoo long range Explorer getting 20 plus minutes of flight time with something like this which is a lightweight. This one is a little bit heavier weight but still this one the Diatone GTM 515 is a lightweight. And it doesn't look like I'm going to get very much of a flight time here. Okay, so here we speed up the video speed a little bit. It's kind of boring just seeing me just cruising around here so i do go for a second flight right after this flight and on the second flight i do get a little over 14 minutes of cruising time 
On this flight here, however, I do bring it in for a landing at a little over nine minutes. So it isn't that bad at all since the Daytona GT M515 is a light quad, but it is still a five inch quad. Okay, so here we are at the park this time for the second flight and the battery has been charged back up. So this is the same battery pack. It took roughly about 30, 35 minutes and about 960 or so milliamps to charge it back up. And this time I do fly until 3.5 volts per cell is remaining and I do get a little over 14 minutes of cruising time. Now, I'll try out some different brand of batteries next time to see if it makes a difference. Now, I still have four more of these LG batteries that I got from Race Day Quads, so I'll go ahead and make a second battery pack. Maybe I'll use some 21700 batteries the next time around for longer flight time. Now, the temperature here is a cool 53 degrees, and there's some light snow up in the mountains. So definitely fall is here and winter is coming. Just a beautiful day here in paradise. So that'll do it for this video of the Make It Yourself 18650 4S battery packs. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.